Mike Taylor, now a 70-year-old man and former CEO of a prominent manufacturing company, was enjoying a peaceful life in his retirement. After stepping down a decade ago to allow his talented second son to take over the reins, he assumed the role of chairman, overseeing the company while dedicating more time to his family. His life revolved around his wife and beloved granddaughter, Nancy, whom he had raised as his own daughter after the tragic loss of her parents in a car accident when she was just a young child. Nancy, now 25 years old, had grown into a gentle yet determined young woman. Despite being the granddaughter of a highly successful businessman, she had chosen to carve her own path. Finding a job at a different company after graduating from college, all the while keeping her prestigious family background hidden. To Mike's great pride, Nancy was modest, hardworking, and principled, avoiding the limelight that her family name could easily afford her. One evening, Mike's second son visited the family home with a proposition. He had a colleague in his company, a young, talented man whom he believed would be a good match for Nancy. With her being at the age where marriage was becoming a consideration, the idea of a matchmaking meeting was introduced. Nancy, initially hesitant, trusted her uncle's judgment and agreed to meet the young man. Her only request was that her family's wealth and status be kept hidden, as she wanted to be judged for who she was, not for her connections. Mike and his son agreed wholeheartedly. The day of the matchmaking arrived. Nancy and Mike dressed simply to avoid drawing attention and made their way to an old, well-established restaurant for the meeting. The restaurant's proprietress, recognizing Mike from his many business dinners during his time as CEO, greeted him warmly, though he asked her to keep his identity discreet for the sake of Nancy's wishes. As they entered the room, they were greeted by two men, Charles Wilson, the young man in question and his father, who immediately struck Mike as someone unpleasant. Charles, however, made a good first impression. He stood up to greet them with a refreshing smile, introducing himself politely and gesturing for them to take their seats. Nancy returned his greeting, and they both sat down. However, the elder Mr. Wilson did not offer the same courtesy. He remained seated, his expression sour and judgmental, as he eyed Mike and Nancy critically. His lack of decorum immediately put Mike on edge. Mike had dealt with many difficult personalities over the years, but he couldn't shake the sense of unease growing inside him as he noted the father's dismissive attitude. Despite this tension, the meeting began cordially enough, with Charles doing his best to uphold the conversation. He came across as earnest, intelligent, and polite. Mike could see that the young man had potential and seemed genuinely interested in getting to know Nancy. However, things took a turn when Mr. Wilson Sr., clearly dissatisfied with the match, began making snide comments insulting both Mike and Nancy. He sneered and questioned their backgrounds, seemingly irritated by their modest appearance. His disdainful attitude only worsened when Nancy, normally a quiet and reserved person, defended her grandfather from the man's rude remarks. In response, the elder Wilson lost his temper. Enraged by being talked back to, he threw the contents of his cup at Nancy, splashing her hair and clothes. Though the liquid was cold, the act was shockingly disrespectful. Mike, furious at the insult to his granddaughter, immediately decided that the match was over. He could no longer tolerate the man's behavior and with a calm but stern voice, announced that they were leaving. Without another word, he took Nancy by the hand and left the room, feeling both relieved and disappointed that the meeting had ended in such an awful way. Nancy had remained composed, though visibly shaken, but Mike knew that he had made the right decision. He could not entrust his precious granddaughter to a family with such low-class manners, regardless of how talented or kind Charles may have seemed. As they left the restaurant and returned home, Mike reflected on the day's events. His heart ached for Nancy, who deserved so much better than the disrespect they had been shown. Yet, he was proud of her for standing her ground and for remaining true to her values. Mike knew that while this match had failed, there would be others in the future, and when the right person came along, someone who would truly cherish Nancy, he would support her wholeheartedly. Until then... He would continue to protect and care for her, just as he had always done.
The meeting was primarily arranged to discuss a potential matchmaking between Nancy and Charles. Upon entering the room, I greeted Charles and his father, Richard, with a polite smile, careful not to create a bad atmosphere. Richard, however, remained seated with a sullen and unfriendly expression, indicating he did not have a favorable impression of us. Despite this, I took my seat without making a fuss. Soon after we were seated, the restaurant's proprietor entered, setting down the drinks for the customary toast before leaving us to our meeting. Charles, seemingly the opposite of his father, took a deep breath and began speaking in a calm and welcoming tone. He thanked us for attending and explained that he had asked the CEO to arrange this opportunity. With a smile, he introduced his father, prompting Richard to greet us. Richard, however, responded reluctantly and with clear disdain. His tone was cold and dismissive, as if he couldn't be bothered with the meeting. Sensing the tension, Charles quickly apologized for his father's rudeness, showing clear embarrassment at his behavior. He genuinely seemed like a decent man, trying his best to mitigate the awkwardness that his father was causing. Despite Charles's sincerity, Richard continued to display a hostile attitude. I encouraged Nancy, who was seated beside me, to introduce herself. She stood up confidently, speaking with a dignified air. She introduced herself and acknowledged her inexperience in such meetings, expressing gratitude for the opportunity. Nancy then gestured toward me, explaining that I was her grandfather and that I had raised her after her parents passed away when she was young. At this point, Richard's expression soured even further. With a sneer, he rudely asked Nancy about her profession, clearly scrutinizing her background. He then mentioned that he knew of me, as I had joined his company as a sales manager after he had retired. Richard's hostility was palpable, as he continued to express his disapproval, implying that both Nancy and I were beneath his family's social standing. He showed no shame in insulting us, even suggesting that Nancy lacked proper upbringing due to her parents' absence. Suppressing my irritation, I remained calm and explained that I was now retired and living a quiet life. Richard scoffed at this and made a condescending remark about me living off a pension, further insulting my financial status. His arrogance knew no bounds, and I could feel my anger rising. Despite Charles's efforts to stop his father, Richard continued to belittle us, boasting about his son's accomplishments and emphasizing how much time and money had been invested in Charles's education and career. He made it clear that he believed Nancy was unworthy of marrying into their family. Nancy, who had been sitting quietly up until this point, reached her breaking point. She slammed her hand on the table and stood up, demanding that Richard stop insulting her grandfather. I had never seen Nancy so angry before, and I could tell that Richard's hurtful comments had deeply affected her. Her outburst only enraged Richard further. He stood up and, in an unforgivable act of disrespect, threw the contents of his teacup at Nancy. Thankfully, the tea was cold, but it drenched her hair, blouse, and skirt. I was stunned into silence. Richard sat back down with a satisfied smirk, continuing to insult us, calling us low class and accusing us of wasting his time. Charles, clearly horrified by his father's behavior, shouted at him, demanding an apology. Richard, however, remained defiant, insisting that Nancy should apologize to him for speaking out of turn. He reiterated his belief that Charles should be aiming to marry the CEO's daughter, not someone like Nancy. At that point, I had had enough. I announced that we were declining the matchmaking arrangement and stood up to leave with Nancy. Despite Richard's continued insults, I ignored him and guided Nancy out of the room. The restaurant's proprietor, shocked to see Nancy drenched, quickly brought a towel and helped her dry off. She efficiently arranged for a car to take us away from the restaurant. As we left, neither Nancy nor I spoke a word. The hurtful words from Richard had clearly affected her deeply, and I could see how saddened she was by the mention of her parents. Just as we were about to get into the car, we heard hurried footsteps behind us. To our surprise, Charles and Richard came rushing out of the restaurant. Charles was clearly upset, and with tears in his eyes, he profusely apologized for his father's behavior.
Even more surprisingly, Richard, who had shown nothing but contempt earlier, also apologized, looking flustered and embarrassed. It turned out that after we had left, Charles had called the CO to explain what had happened. In doing so, he had discovered that Nancy was actually the CEO's niece and that I was the chairman of the company. This revelation had clearly shocked Richard, who had no idea that the people he had been insulting were far more influential than he had assumed. During a recent conversation, my second son mentioned us, which had a noticeable impact on Richard's demeanor. His sudden shift in attitude was truly astonishing. This was the same man who had recently insulted a group of retirees, dismissing them as low lives. I couldn't resist the opportunity to challenge him on his hypocrisy. Is there still something you'd like to say to these so-called low lives living on a pension? I asked, my voice dripping with sarcasm as I smiled at Richard. He paled instantly, his eyes darting around as if searching for an escape, clearly realizing he had overstepped. Struggling to find the right words, Richard began to stammer, but I cut him off with a low, measured voice. Isn't lowlife a more fitting term for someone like you? Someone who can insult others without a second thought. Richard turned a sickly shade of white, beads of sweat forming on his forehead. He stood there, utterly speechless, as I took another step closer and leaned in slightly. I'll be sure to inform the CEO to review your position thoroughly. Upon hearing this, Richard's legs seemed to buckle. He crouched down, lowering his head to the ground in a deep bow, his voice thin with desperation as he apologized. I'm terribly sorry. I had no idea she was the chairman's granddaughter. He repeated his apology over and over, but I said nothing. As the silence stretched on, Richard's voice grew more frantic. If she is the chairman's granddaughter, we would be honored to proceed with matchmaking. His attitude was so insincere and opportunistic that I could only sigh. This was the very type of person Nancy despised, someone who judged people based on their social standing rather than their character. We already declined the matchmaking. I replied with a sing-song tone, trying to convey just how exasperated I was. You also told us to leave. What are you talking about now? Richard hung his head even lower at my words. But before we could leave, Charles, the son of Richard, called out to us. Nancy, Chairman Taylor, please wait. Nancy and I turned to face Charles, who looked visibly embarrassed. Please allow us to continue the matchmaking, he pleaded. No, I said firmly. We've already declined. I apologize, but your father's behavior was intolerable. Just as I finished speaking, Charles looked up, meeting my eyes directly. His voice was steady, but filled with conviction. Please, if you allow us to continue, I'll sever ties with my father. That's how much I care about Nancy. Nancy gasped beside me, and I was equally surprised. I glanced at her, noting her intense focus on Charles as he continued, quieter now but still earnest. The truth is, my father has always pressured me to meet with the CEO's daughter for a matchmaking. The CEO, probably worn down by my father's persistence, eventually asked if I would be interested in meeting his daughter. Charles glanced at Nancy, his expression slightly embarrassed, and continued, But I told the CEO that I already had someone I cared about. He took a deep breath, his voice softening. Actually, when I visited a client... I saw Nancy working there, and I fell in love at first sight. When I mentioned Nancy Taylor to the CEO, he arranged this meeting without knowing that you are the chairman, and she is your granddaughter. I nodded, beginning to understand. I see. So this meeting was set up without you realizing who we were. That's right, Charles confirmed. Please, give me another chance. His apology seemed sincere, and it was clear that his feelings for Nancy were genuine. At this point, I felt it wasn't my place to decide, so I turned to Nancy. She gazed at Charles and, after a moment, spoke softly. I also want to know more about you, Charles. Her shy response made me smile. Seeing these two young people trying to build something authentic was heartwarming. All right, I conceded. But for today, we'll be leaving. Nancy needs a change, and I'll arrange another meeting for us to talk properly. I paused, 
glancing at Richard, who was still kneeling, his face pale with anxiety. However, the condition is that your father does not interfere in any way from now on. Of course, Charles replied quickly. I'll cut ties with him today. As we talked, Richard, who had remained bowed down, suddenly looked up, his voice shaking with disbelief. Cut ties? You! Charles didn't flinch. He looked down at his father with cold resolve. I've always had doubts about your habit of belittling others. This incident made me realize just how wrong you are. I don't need you in my life anymore. I was impressed by Charles's firm declaration. If he could stand up to his father like this, I might actually be able to trust him with Nancy. Feeling reassured, I told Charles the first would be in touch. Then Nancy and I left. The next day, I returned to the company for the first time in a while. I headed straight to the HR manager's office, bringing my second son along as well as the CEO. The three of us discussed the events of the previous day. Review all internal personnel matters thoroughly. I ordered. This is a directive from the chairman. The HR manager wasted no time. Interviews and investigations were conducted, and Richard's bad attitude quickly came to light. It turned out that while he was obsequious to higher-ups like my son and the HR manager, he was arrogant and condescending toward his subordinates. There were even allegations of workplace bullying. Richard's punishment was swift. He was demoted to a regular employee and transferred to a remote location. When he was informed of his demotion, his pride couldn't take the blow. I won't work as a regular employee, he spat. I'll quit. And with that, he resigned immediately. Frankly, it was a relief for the company. We didn't want someone like him causing trouble in the new location. In the weeks that followed, the matchmaking between Nancy and Charles proceeded smoothly. They began dating, and it was clear that Nancy was genuinely happy with him. Seeing her so content filled me with a sense of peace. One evening, Charles joined us for dinner, and after we finished eating, he hesitated before bringing up a delicate topic. I wanted to talk about my parents, he began. After my father quit his job, my mother finally expressed how unhappy she had been with his behavior, and they decided to get a divorce. I see, I replied. That must have been difficult for you. Charles shook his head. No, actually, my mother has taken up tennis again, and she seems much happier now. As for me, I have no plans to see my father anymore. He looked at me apologetic as ever. I'm really sorry for what happened that day. Charles, I said kindly, don't worry about it. I was truly impressed when you stood up for yourself and shared your feelings. I'm happy to see how far you've come. Nancy, smiling, agreed. I was really happy that day too, Charles. Their relationship grew stronger over time. They went on dates shared meals with us, and seemed to nurture a calm, steady connection. Watching them build a solid foundation reaffirmed my decision to support them, and I vowed to continue watching over Nancy's romantic journey with warmth and care.